Hello, I am uh, presenting a summary of a sermon that I gave last week, Parshas Nasso, the week after Shavuos, on Torah. Uh, one of the major assumptions that I am trying to challenge is that Shavuos is the end of a process. And one of the problems we have in the, in the United States is that Shavuos comes in June. June is the beginning of the summer. It's the beginning of fun and relaxation. It's when we let go, so to speak, and we get out there. And yet Shavuos is a time of the giving and receiving of the Torah. And isn't it odd that at a time that we celebrate new commitment to Torah, we then you know, complete Shavuos and we move on to, okay, let's get on with the summer. So we've actually introduced the building block called Torah, using Shavuos as the introduction for that building block, so that we can be engaged in a discussion of what it means to relate to Torah, uh, even after Shavuos, and even while we're having fun, and even uh, while we're having a wonderful, relaxing, recreational summer. So I want to make a couple of suggestions about how a person can actually acquire and retain ownership in Torah, because we always uh, ask God, give us our share in Torah, which means that everybody has a share in Torah to own. And if they have that share, then um, how do they get it? And how do they keep it? How do you make sure that what is yours actually is yours? So there are a couple of suggestions. One is that a person should look for where the struggle is. Wherever you think your limitation in, is in relationship to Torah, and I'll give you a possible example, that's the moment and area of opportunity for you to actually acquire Torah. You see, where you're already comfortable studying Torah or knowing Torah, what comes naturally to you, that's not going to be the place where you're going to actually uh, create an ownership in Torah. That's already what you have. But the Torah requires that a person challenge himself. That's why the Torah says, "Im lechu." If you go in my chukim, Rashi comments, "Shetihu amelim b'Torah," that you be struggling, toiling in Torah. Torah requires pushing the envelope, which means wherever you don't want to go, that's the beginning of the opportunity to actually develop a relationship in Torah. Everybody has their own personal limitations. Some people have skill limitations. Some people have certain material they just never studied and don't and think that they can't. Some people have practices that they just think they can't relate to. Those areas are the areas you want to challenge yourself and be creative in. Actually take on doing something in time, perhaps. You think you don't have the time. Test yourself. Go to the boundary of your limitation, and actually that's where you want to work. That's one major way of acquiring Torah, a melin Torah, to be struggling, toiling in Torah. And when you do that, you'll find creativity in every aspect of your relationship to Torah. The second important tool for a person to use to acquire a relationship to Torah is Ahavas Yisrael, loving your fellow Jew. Now you might say, what in the world does that have to do with acquiring my share in Torah? Why, I understand that personal relationships are important, but why would my share in Torah have anything to do with loving a fellow Jew? And the answer is that the Torah wasn't given to individuals. The Torah was given to a nation. And therefore, I have access to the Torah by making sure that I am connected to the nation. Now, the people that you get along with and the people that you like naturally and the people that you're comfortable with that doesn't require any spiritual work to connect to them. That's not Avas Yisrael. That's naturally the way you relate to people. The people that perhaps you have difficulty with, the people that you are afraid of, the people that you resent, the people that you're not comfortable with, the people who look different, act different, think different, the people who don't naturally invite you for a beer uh, on a Saturday night, those are the people that you want to actually work on trying to connect to, or at least value and appreciate. Ahavas Yisrael, loving a fellow Jew, means actually looking for the positive and the good and the virtue in another person. When you do that, you become naturally connected. 
to the entire nation of Israel because you're actually proactively looking to connect. So there's two tools here. One is looking for the struggle in your Torah. The second is looking for creative relationship with people that wouldn't naturally be connected to you. When we practice those two things, we'll, act, we'll actually be involved in a process of acquiring Torah. The period of time after Shavuos is actually a period of time that the Jewish people historically were really working on the connection to Torah because Moshe goes up to Mount Sinai on Shavuos. He's up there for 40 days. While he's up there, he's acquiring Torah. When he comes down, we find out that we were very vulnerable to some real problems. 40 days after the giving of the Torah is when we worship the golden calf. So this is a period of time which is very delicate. The Torah is compared to a tree. When a tree is planted, it's in a very vulnerable state. It has to be given the right amount of water. Not too much, not too little. I just planted some trees in my front yard. Two are going well, one died. I don't know why, but they're very vulnerable at that stage of life. We're at the very beginning of our annual commitment to Torah. This is a period of time of opportunity to actually begin a new relationship to our Torah. Let's not waste it by thinking that our summer is a time of suspending efforts. It's actually a time with all of our summer activities that we can actually be engaged and challenge ourselves to acquire and own our share in Torah.